My name is Nageshwar Reddy. I am a gastroenterologist working at the Asian Institute of Gastroenterology, Hyderabad, India. Our um, foray into small bowel began with deep entroscopy introduced by Professor Emma Mato in 2001, the double balloon entroscopy. In 2007, a single balloon entroscopy was introduced and in 2008, Paul Ackerman introduced the spiral entroscopy, which was at that time a manual entroscopy. Soon a motorized version of this was made, which overcame the difficulty of using the manual one. And since then, of course, there has been considerable progress in looking at the small intestine. From our institute recently, we published an article on diagnostic yield and technical performance of novel motorized spiral entroscopy compared to single balloon entroscopy in suspected Crohn's disease as pros prospective study. Uh, this study was um, piloted by the lead author, Dr. Partha Pal, who is working as a gastroenterologist who is interested in inflammatory bowel disease and entroscopy in our institute. Partha, why did you conduct this study? In uh, early 2021, when we systematically reviewed the literature on role of device assisted enteroscopy in small bowel Crohn's disease, we found there are certain knowledge gaps. Like we found that there was no prospective study comparing a balloon assisted enteroscopy with motorized spiral enteroscopy. Most of the studies at that time were only on single or double balloon enteroscopy, which showed a high diagnostic yield of more than 70%. Only few studies came on novel motorized spiral enteroscopy. One of them were from our center which showed a high diagnostic yield, more than 80%, higher total enteroscopy rate and higher depth of maximal insertion. 41% patients in that study was inflammatory lesions, although the diagnostic yield in them was not separately analyzed. Another prospective multicenter European study of almost 140 patients showed that the diagnostic yield was more than 70% with motorized spiral enteroscopy. But in case of suspected inflammatory lesions that were only in 21 patients in their study was only 52.3%. So at that point of time, it was not sure which modality to use when you suspect small bowel Crohn's disease. Also, we found that Entroscopy in inflammatory disorders are little different from vascular lesions because it was not only the technical performance that is the ability to reach the lesion, but also it is important to make the diagnosis based on endoscopic appearance and histological confirmation. Most of the studies do not report histological yield, although one of the studies showed that the histological is, is less than one fourth. So it is not known when these patients are treated empirically uh, with Crohn's disease medications, what happened to, to address these issues, we conducted this study. So Partha, what was the important findings in this study that you found? So in this study, we actually recruited these patients suspected to have small bowel Crohn's based on CT or MR enterography or video capsule endoscopy. The patients who were not fit for general anesthesia or sedation were excluded. We performed total 146 single balloon enteroscopies and 55 motorized spiral enteroscopies. The total technical success to reach the lesion was not different between the two modalities. However, when we analyzed the lesions region wise, we found that for proximal ileal lesions and beyond, the technical success was higher with motorized spiral enteroscopy uh, when performed from an anti-grade manner. Also for distal jejunal lesions and beyond, there was a trend towards statistical significance. For approaching a proximal ileal lesion retrograde manner, it was seen that there was higher technical success with motorized spiral compared to single. However, it did not achieve statistical significance due to low numbers in each arm. When analyzing the diagnostic yield, it was similar between the two uh, modalities. When analyzing region wise, we found similar trends. 20% cases, the uh, histology was confirmatory, well, it was suggestive in 61%. In the rest of the cases, we treated them successfully with Crohn's disease medications with a follow-up of around 6 to 15 months. Secondary outcomes were the procedure time, depth of maximal insertion, total enteroscopy rate and adverse event. Depth of uh, maximal insertion was higher with anti-grade motorized spiral enteroscopy compared to single balloon enteroscopy. The time was significantly shorter both for anti-grade and retrograde motorized spiral enteroscopy. These parameters depend on the location of the lesion, that's why analyze the depth by time ratio that it was significantly higher with the motorized spiral enteroscopy uh, both for anti-grade and retrograde highlighting the superior efficiency of motorized spiral enteroscopy over single balloon enteroscopy. Total enteroscopy rate was higher in motorized spiral enteroscopy. However, it was, it was not required in all the patients because if the lesion is rich or it was not possible due to stricture. Adverse events was mild in all, both the groups according to the ASG lexicons. So these were the major findings in our study. So Partha, we know that uh, motorized spiral endoscopy works by rotation technique compared to push and pull technique of the balloon endoscopes. 
So, how does this differ when you are evaluating Crohn's disease and what about other vascular disease? Is there a difference? As we have already mentioned, the principles are different. Earlier manual spiral enteroscopy, which was actually using a long overtube of around 112 centimeter, which was compatible with 200 centimeter long single or double balloon enteroscope. This left only 90 to 95 centimeter of effective length and only 30 to 35 centimeter beyond the ligament of treads. So, it was impossible for even for the most experienced enteroscopies to perform a total enteroscope. Contrast spiral enteroscopy have addressed these issues. It is 168 centimeter long with a short spiral over tube which enables the likelihood of total enteroscopy. So, it has a wide working channel diameter, has a, a water jet which allows better visualization and underwater enteroscopy and better therapeutic enteroscopy. The shorter length of the scope allows for standard endoscopic accessories to be used. So, the user control manual uh, spiral unit uh, actually allows single operator to do the procedure in a simplified and a faster manner. There are few drawbacks like there is no tactile sensation in this. So, it may be difficult to perform in post-operative case. In pediatric cases, it may not be suitable due to the wider diameter of the scope. Although the overall enteroscopy procedure time is shorter with motorized spiral enteroscopy, the overall time may be higher due to the need for general anesthesia in anti-grade motorized spiral enteroscopy because it may take some time to remove the enteroscope while introduced anti-gradely in case of desaturation. Regarding the vascular lesion, it is important to perform total enteroscopy in most of the cases because finding a single lesion may not be important whereas in uh, inflammatory lesions, if you find a single lesion and take able to take biopsy from that, that may be sufficient and may not be total enteroscopy may not be possible due to a stricture that is there. It is found that most of the lesions in suspected inflammatory lesions are there in the ileum as shown in our previous and current study and mostly in the distal ileum. That is why although uh, we have shown that the efficiency of motor spiral endoscopy is higher, that is why it can explain why there is the overall technical and diagnostic yield were similar between the two modalities. Diagnosis of this inflammatory lesions are more challenging because it is not only the ability to reach the lesion but also to take uh, biopsies and for histological confirmation. Thank you Partha. I think uh, this was a very important study and I think this is clearly shown that our ability to go very deep into the small intestine is now evolving better and better and with the advent of this motorized spiral endoscopy, we have this ability to do pan endoscopy much more uh, uh, times and also to have a significantly higher diagnostic yield rates and also I think the time taken is much shorter with uh, motorized spiral endoscopy compared to balloon endoscopy. The other important thing is that I think for the endoscopies, the fatigue is much less when using spiral endoscopy compared to balloon endoscopy. So, there are certainly these advantages, but as you have shown in your study, the yield may be similar with inflammatory bowel disease and I think one has to choose which modality to use either a balloon endoscopy or a motorized spiral endoscopy based upon several factors, not only the local expertise and what is available there, but also I think in general for pediatric patients, those who have contraindications for general anesthesia. And those patients in the post-operative situations, we may have to still go for a balloon endoscopy rather than a motorized spiral endoscopy. Uh, however, I think uh, this study again very importantly emphasizes the fact that we are evolving into a new era and what we require to do now is to do randomized parallel consecutive studies in RCTs to compare the, both these modalities to see which would be most effective in our patients both with inflammatory bowel disease and non-inflammatory bowel disease involving the small bowel. So thank you very much.